This is my go-to mix bus chain. Girthy, saturated, wide, fat, huge. Mix. Whatever you want to call it. So mix bus, this is what everyone's obsessed with, right? Like it's the holy grail of every good mix. That sounded a bit sarcastic, but I kind of agree with that, especially when you're mixing in the box. Lots of little changes on the mix bus can really, really help things stand out and can really, really help make a mix shine. It's something to be careful with if you're a beginner. I don't think I do anything particularly crazy. The first plugin is an API style fader. This is mostly here for practical reasons. It does add some color, but really sometimes I'm producing a track with someone, we've been working all day, and then we need to bounce the track at the end, right? So I route all of my tracks into the master bus, but then it's peaking loads. And then I can just grab this. I can turn it down, gain stage it into my chain, everything's hunky-dory. Then we have the Black Box Analog Design HG2 by Brainworks. This plugin sounds absolutely amazing. I love it. It's really subtle and it can also just destroy snares. It's amazing. It is a total nightmare to use in terms of gain staging and like level matching. So most of the time it kind of just stays on this setting. There is an update where I think it has like auto gain control, but I don't I don't really feel like paying for an update on something that should probably just be included, right? It should be a free update, making something work properly. If I get sent a load of stems and they feel really, really dull or they're lacking a bit of air, I can just stick this on. It's really good, really transparent. Sometimes it can get a bit spitty around 10K, but for the most part, it's great. And this saturation, you've got two different colors here. It's fantastic. It's really easy to dial in. It's when you start using this pentode and triode knobs versus the output that you have to start being careful, making sure that you're bypassing, which unfortunately the on-off thing is like all the way on the other side of the output level. They haven't really thought it through. And the next plugin is just Logic IO, which is sending to my outboard. I've built myself a transformer box, a passive transformer box. It's basically got the two line output transformers from a Neve 1073 in. I just wired them up. It's set so that it saturates and it sounds amazing. It sort of widens the stereo image, softens everything up, adds some low end, makes the top end smoother, just does everything that you want an analog piece of equipment to do to your sound. I can promise you that buying those transformers and wiring it up was a lot cheaper than two 1073s. After my DIY passive transformer box, it goes into an SSL bus compressor. It's not an actual SSL bus compressor. It's a clone by a company called Necotronics. Gray, who is the designer and builder there, He's just done an amazing job and it sounds so, so good. I basically only ever use it on like one or two settings. It just sits at four to one, slow attack, fast release. And it just does that thing for me. After my bus compressor, it goes into an SSL ultraviolet EQ. And this thing is so cheap now. You can get them secondhand for like 360 quid. And it sounds so good. Like you just boost a little bit of top end, a little bit of mid-range and it just sounds really good you boost the low end it sounds really good and you cut some mud and it just sounds really good so it's just doing a little bit of tonal shaping for me on my mix bus so if you want to know what my hardware settings look like this is what they are in plugin form this api channel strip plugin and this is basically just set up to do whatever my analog mix bus chain is and that way if i need to open something and check it or if i need to start a mix away from my hardware i have something that's comparable straight away essentially it's getting some color from this input stage and then it's getting slow attack, four to one, fast release compression, right? From a VCA compressor, it's gonna be very similar. And then we have this EQ that's going on after the compressor is set to post. So we're just brightening up a bit at 12 and a half K, boosting a little bit of one and a half K, cutting some mud at four, 500 Hertz, and then boosting some low end at like 50 top end shelf, bottom end shelf, very, very normal. So then we come back in the box and this is where I use standard clip. This is so cool. You just set it to soft clip pro and then wherever your transients are, you just pull this saturator along until you start clipping just the tops of your kick or your snare. 
it's super super good you can do loads of damage with it <laughs> that sounds amazing or you can just have it work very very gently just sounds great i've i barely ever spend any time dialing this in because you just said it and everything's gain staged it just works then we have the sony oxford inflator and this thing is amazing like it is so good i have it set up so that it will do a quarter of a db of clipping with the clip button on and i have it gain staged on the output so that my limiters set correctly and i don't need to think about that and then most of the time what i do is it loads up like this i'll just put it on full i'll choose whether i like the curve that way or that way and then i'll dial it in it's basically always this way that always sounds better than that way to me and then i'll just bring it down until i get something i like and most of the time i end up with the curve on about 15 and about 30 percent effect which some people would say is really really high other people use it even further up but yeah that just sounds really really good for me this band split thing i rarely ever use that yeah it just sounds amazing get it it's on sale pretty often if you want your track to sound like a record and you only want to use plugins to do it that's an important one to have so then we have dseq3 and this thing's just amazing i use it really really gently if at all on mix bus but it can be really really good for just poking things back into the mix when they get a bit too rambunctious so about three 3.5 is like a pink noise curve it's going to be mimicking that you bring down the threshold I'll, I'll normally see it try to control the low end and some mids around here first I, I don't tend to boost a lot of this sort of 5k area in my mixes um i tend to leave that sort of stuff to mastering if i can just because i i think really expensive analog eqs boost nastier frequencies a lot nicer than plugins do this is great you can put it in mid side mode you can tell it to do all sorts of things it's got a demo i can highly highly recommend it if you own soothe you might not want to bother getting it but if you don't own soothe i would probably get this instead it's a little bit more versatile and then yeah that outputs uh to this the isotope mastering suite i only have the maximizer on ever really sometimes i'll add other things in there but pretty rarely now sounds really really good this irc modern thing is fantastic the character you can make small adjustments on this and it will affect the overall punch and clarity of your mix i love this stereo independence thing so this means that it will keep your transients all the fast information really really tight and dead center but then all of the, like the legato sustaining stuff you can set that to be quite independent stereo wise so basically if you put this on and you're doing a few db of limiting you'll have quite a cohesive stereo image and then if you just drag this fader up the sides will get wider but the center will stay really punchy and that is super clever if you've listened to any of my mixes You've probably not heard it with this on because uh, my mastering engineer doesn't use it but i do love having a really really good limiter on there so that when i send my mixes to my clients they're nice and loud and competitive to be honest the way that i clip and saturate and compress all the way through my mixes and this will be doing like half or one db of limiting i see other people mixing into limiters and they'll pull it right down and they'll be getting like three to six db of compression on their limiter when i mix like that it just sounds quite pumpy and thin i don't like what it does to the mid-range on that or l2 for example which is like the waves one which basically everyone uses it just doesn't work for me so i don't do it but yeah that's my mix bus chain come in gain stage it control it saturation more outboard saturation compression eq then a little bit of clipping then some more saturation and a bit of like an eq curve and then a little bit of control if i've got any build-ups which i tend to avoid if i can and then a tiny tiny bit of limiting just to make sure it's peaking at the right level and that's the mix bus
So let's have a little look at this routine. This is really boring, but it makes my workflow really easy, particularly if I start using hardware for my drum bus or my bass, so, or my vocal, for example. I like to provide my clients with group stems. And the easiest way to do that is to create a post fader send. So it includes all of my automation that I'm going to do on the buses, and there will be a lot, to an audio track. And all of these audio tracks have no output, so I can never hear them, but they're in a group. I just press record, and then I record in real time my mix. So then when I'm recording the final mix, I can just turn all of these on, record them all in, I'll have a group stem of the drums, the bass, the guitars, keys, the vocals, and the reverb to send to the clients. If I need to do an instrumental, I can just duplicate this track here, call it instrumental, and then I have to turn off some of the reverb sends and then mute the vocal bus, and then I can just print my instrumental really, really easily. Super, super quick way of doing things. It also means that for posterity, if people want to get stuff remixed later down the line, I mean, for different formats, like let's say surround sound mixing becomes huge and really, really normalized. My clients are like, hey, can we have separates? It's like, you've already got them. I don't need to do any work. I don't need to go back and try and provide them with anything. You just got everything you need for... I, I consider it to be like future proofing. So yeah, it's boring, but it's helpful. So don't forget, you can download this template from the link below. And if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. Like and subscribe for a new video every week. Shred Nart.